Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Ravens back into the Dota Pit League back. Season 2. It is the beginning of the league. We've got, of course, our second game between Virtus Pro Polar and Seeking Nix Assassins. A first game already went down, and it was one of the best games we've seen in some time, especially with Ilden on that Medusa picking up that Divine Rapier. If you missed Ten it, you missed a good one. Remaining. Although, we are going to jump into game number two here in just a second. The draft already underway. Five seconds Again, thanks remaining. for joining us. My name is Mott. With me today is Beatus. How you doing, man? Reserve that first game was ridiculous. It was crazy. It was nuts. It was all over the place. VPP pulled a great game off, and that that deciding fight with the double ravage and the triple buyback from Sneaky Nix Assassins, DK Phobos just used Fog to its full advantage, back. ran around on the side, and got in on all of the clustered up heroes from Sna before they could react with BKBs or anything to the ravage, and they just burned through an Aegis and Radiant team. Uh, Ush couldn't even get his cheese off in time. That was extremely well executed from BPP. It was just really, I, I thought for sure, but at least before that Divine Rapier was picked up, that there was absolutely no way that uh, Virtus Pro Polar were going to be able to pull that one out. But we, we kind of made a choice. Uh... <laughs> Oh my god! Alright! I can't even- I don't even know what to talk about anymore because there's a Magnus and Medusa in this game. It's not picking up the Brewmaster, but that's not the important thing. That's just- that's awesome, Goblack. You're great. You're just great. Well, Magnus got buffed this patch. Yes. Just because Empower doesn't get removed when you BKB anymore. Mm -hmm. That is such a huge deal. Um... Medusa's, uh, if, is that the new flavor of the month? Ten seconds. I, I mean, for Goblack it is. Yeah, it might start to be. Five seconds. Uh, Elden remaining. played great last game, and if you're Sna, you have to look at that Medusa pick and go, "Okay, we can't let that happen again. We have to get something that can go aggressive against Medusa and put some pressure on him early." Uh, they were the ones to ban out Skyrath, so they can't pick him and have a really strong aggressive triline. So they have to look for other heroes that they can pull off a good aggressive triline with something like Ancient Apparition, for example. Yeah. We see a lot of Eng too, I think, in this patch, especially. I'm, I'm not sure if that really works in this situation, but I think it's not a bad choice. Especially with armor reduction, the way it is right now, and just how good it is. Especially getting a medallion and being sneaky next assassins, they like to do that. Um, if they send the Brewmaster aggressive, that could work out too. But more than likely, TC plays in mid like he always does, so... The only time I've seen sneaky next assassins go aggressive, they had a Wraith King, Brewmaster, and Potom Trilane. And it didn't work out for them. Well, this is gonna be uh, it's gonna be a fun one to say the very least. And again, Sneaky Nix Assassins, they could potentially lose this one. They could draw it up, and take it one one. But Virtus Pro Polar with that win, they've already put themselves in a pretty good position here. So, again, though, this is not going to be our last match of the day. Uh, we will have, I believe, coming up next, Hellraisers versus Denial, and that'll be at about twenty one thirty CEST for those of you watching. We've got one game to get through first. And uh, should be a good one, although a lot of reserve time being used already. Sneaky Nick's Assassins, really they go for the anti mage. They go the complete opposite direction of what you yeah. were thinking. And he's like, alright, let's get anti mage and burn the Medusa's mana. Uh, that's work. surprising to see a pick this early. The Medusa yeah. I can understand from VPP because they're sitting there, Goblet saying, okay, we just crushed them with Ten Medusa. They don't know how to play against it. So we're going to pick it so they don't ban Five in the second ban phase. Five seconds remaining. Uh, Sneaky Nix Assassins, they're afraid of Scandal playing Clinks, so that was used Reserve up in their time. first band phase instead of Medusa. They did not see a Ten first phase Medusa remaining. coming out. That that just that came out of nowhere, man. I mean, I guess if it doesn't, you know, if it's good, 
Wow. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see why Medusa was picked in the first phase of this game. I can't see why Anti Mage was picked in the first phase. Are they afraid of VPP banning out Radiant something like Team Void Anti Mage because Void is a popular hero right now and he's just a good carry in general, good team fighter? Um, but I don't think they would have banned out Anti Mage. I I put it at like a less than one percent chance that Anti Mage. Did they ban it on the last game? Is is what I'm curious about. I'm not sure. Uh, Five seconds well, remaining. Well, we'll have to I wait and I, see. By the time they picked Medusa in the last game, they picked Dyer a fourth, I believe. Ban. And Sneaky Nick's Assassins only had... They had a carry pick left. It might have been their fifth ban, DPP's fifth ban. I'm not 100%. Well, this is interesting. An interesting choice. Yeah. Uh, I do want to also remaining. point out, we do have a statsman joining us for today. It is that Phage guy who's been, of course, Five High Ground TV's remaining. resident statsman. Check him out over on Twitter at twitter.com slash that phage guy and actually mike just tweeted about this this draft he's literally in the draft and he tweets Radiant about it. he actually has a picture of the draft already up on twitter because why not you know at this point <laughs> this, this is a interesting draft i mean i guess there's no point there's no reason not to but um yeah i you know hold, hold on apparently my mic is is being finicky it might be your mic too i'm not, I'm not sure no it's mine that was echoing you uh I talked to Fog to try to get it fixed. So who's that on? Yeah. If it's echoing you, that's something from my settings. Remaining. Which okay. should be good. No one. Fog was the only one that was able to come up with a pinpoint Reserve for it. Time. Five so, all right, I don't know. Remaining. I have no idea then. Listen. Hopefully, muting voice volume, putting that to zero, fixes it. Yeah. Hopefully. We'll see. Dire team we'll see. Pick. Uh, I'm going to change more settings around. We do have a Reddit, uh, Rubik pick coming out. Sneaky Nick's Assassins have literally no reserve time, so if they... They're going to start randoming pretty soon. They will pick up the Rubik. Puck now picked up a Virtus Propolar. A pretty Radiant similar draft from what they had in the last game, but this time a Magnus choice here coming out. This could be good for them, so we'll have to see how things turn out. Rubik is a pretty good pickup against Magnus. It's not too terribly hard to steal RP. Once Rubik gets a blank, you can steal a blank RP VPP. Uh, with the puck pickup from VP, they can Magnus offline or Magnus spin. Puck's playing the other lane that Mag's not in. Yeah, they've got a lot of choices here. That's the thing. Seconds, uh, I like that. It's going to be a scandal puck again. Yeah. And DK Foe is going to play offline Mag. Five yeah. Seconds, and I'm totally down maybe. for that. They don't really have kill potential to Magnus, I don't think, anyway, with a Ruby Gains of Age. Maybe with an Ancient Apparition, they have a bit more, but th this is, again, going the opposite direction of what we talked about, which is... You know, putting pressure on this Medusa early on and shutting her down. But I don't know if there's any real way to shut down this Medusa. I just, especially and if she gets on the to back Medusa up and make even more Medusa images. Or make anti mage images. Uh, that's just remaining. gross to think about. This even was an amazing pick. Five in seconds this game. remaining. Mm -hmm. It's so good with Medusa, it's so good against anti mage. It really is. Reserve it just makes sense time. here. Obviously, Illusions coming out with Mana Burn, pretty nice to have. Um. So, we'll have to see how things go. They do ban up the Nyx Assassin. Radiant they also ban up the Keeper of the Light, by the way, which is interesting. You don't see that too often, but I guess whatever works. Yep, Cuddle is still good in aggressive tri lanes. They did not want to get aggressive. No. And have, like, a safe lane anti-mage plus an aggressive tri lane with anti-mage versus Magnus. Ten seconds remaining. Which with Magnus is extremely low mana pool early on, anti-mage could probably Five do really well in the matchup. Remaining. Mm. We'll have to see how this goes. The Murano Band now coming out for Sneaky Nick's Assassins. Dire team pick. Virtus Pro Polar. They've got one more pick here. And, uh... Well, I mean, it's got to be support at this point. You already have the Shadow Demon. They go for the Ogre Magi. Okay. That is, they're Radiant giving Medusa team. steroids this game. Magnus buff and Ogre buff. Yeah, oh, they really are. Right. <laughs> they're putting all the eggs in the Medusa <laughs> basket. It worked in the last game. Why not go for it this it, game? Yeah, now they're really going. Cool. For all their eggs in the Medusa basket. Their two other cores other than the Medusa are huge team fighters. And they've got two amazing buffs from Medusa and they went shot a demon to Can you imagine just like an RP into a Medusa like split shot with like uh, bloodlust and Ten power on her and remaining. like just give her a you know disruption as well, like a soul catcher, or just like Five just so much remaining. damage coming out from Virtus Pro Polar. If they hit a good team fight, they're gonna be able to obliterate Ten everybody. Seconds. But Sneaky Nick's assassins pick up the Templar Assassin. With their last pick, something that we see a lot of Scandal play, but maybe not necessarily no, a lot of Snaw. That's going to be TC playing TA mid, mm -hmm. and TA is really good against Puck, so what does VP do? They put Magnus mid. Scandal's playing Mag, and they're putting Puck offline. Well, 
We'll have to see how this goes. I mean, Sneak and Ink's Assassins, they're staring down the barrel of a 2-0 deficit here. Losing their first map, essentially, in the Dota Pit League Season 2 ticket. Of course, we do have a big prize pool going the way of the winner of this one. But it can be increased with the Dota ticket. It's in the Dota stories. Go ahead and check it out. Of course, we are here on Twitch.tv slash Dota Pit as well, if you're interested. And uh, we are going to jump into the game. So, we've got some time here. I mean, again, this is a Medusa. This could be a long one. As we're waiting to get underway seconds, here, our second remaining. game of the day. But, uh, I'm excited. Man, this is, this is a damn remaining. good draft. This is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I'm down. Definitely a breath of fresh air into the into the metagame whenever there's a new patch. Because the teams are trying to figure out strategies. And you see here that you haven't seen in a long time. I mean, like, this is we just, this is godlike in a nutshell. I think so. Yep. It's exciting. And even style this game is picking heroes that they don't normally pick. Like Rubik, anti -mage. TA, Anti-Mage, yeah. those are heroes that you don't see too often. Ancient Apparition comes up every once in a while, and Brewmaster is a consistent ban or pick hero. We're getting uh, to that point in 6.82B where everything's starting to get shifted around here. And if there's one person that's going to make sure that the metagame is shifted, it's going to be the uh, the great drafter himself. It's going to be Goblike. But one thing I want to talk about is this is an offlane Brewmaster, which I think you discussed in the draft, but... This is something you don't see too often for IX Mike 88. This is not one of his go to heroes. Maybe you'll see a Void, maybe you'll see a Centaur, Tidehunter, um, you know, a couple other heroes in this pool, but Brewmaster is certainly not one that I see too often. 30 seconds. You, I've seen him play it a bunch. Well, should work not, out. Not him. necessarily in matches. In matches, it's almost always TC taking mm -hmm. up Brewmaster, mm -hmm. but he does practice it in his own in house league. The ICL. Meanwhile, DP so. ran five heroes bottom lane at the start of the game just so they can block the Radiant Jungle and make it a lot more difficult for Nyx to get their pulls off. And Nyx, if you look at the, the heroes, they games. don't have sentries. They got boots on Wipeyear this game. That you try to nick it out. Oh! oh. It's thing from Wipeyear getting that deny on the Nicely done. bottom. That's just a smart little play that comes out. They're running two heroes. They might send them bottom. They have Medusa top for Illidan. They did this last game, I think, for at least a little bit. They just kind of sent the heroes towards the off lane. Just kept them there. But this is going to be... They want to put pressure on Ush. And I think if they can get some kills, they can certainly just start a balling out of control. But, again, this is going to be a game where we're going to see probably 20 to 30 minutes without, you know, any huge plays or, you know, any ridiculous tier 2, tier 3 tower uh, going down. I'm not going to sit so. after last game. Last game started getting crazy when I thought we were still going to be farming for a little while. Yeah, that's true. Something we'll have to keep our eyes on, but... I, I don't know, I just feel like, especially with a, a, an anti-mage in this game, it could take a while for things to get going. However, with that being said, some introductions going underway. Virtus Pro Polar, the winners of the first game. DK Phobos playing the Puck, the farming hero in this lane. Goblike on the Ogre Magi. Lilith will be on the Shadow Demon. Mid lane, it's going to be Scandal playing your Magnus, so... Uh, a bit different than what we thought. TC getting harassed down by Scandal as well. Top lane, it is going to be Ilden again on the Medusa. I expect your off lane Brewmaster for Sna. We'll see TC man on your Templar Assassin. Whitebeard on your Rubik roaming towards the mid lane. Fluff on your Ancient Apparition. And Us is playing your Anti Mage. So they're actually doing really well in this lane down bottom. They really can't get close for Sneaky Nyx Assassin, so they can't get any farm. Whitebeard's going to roam on Scandal. He has Telekinesis. Can't get in range to pop it just yet. He does have boots of speed, so we will catch up to Scandal here. Right clicking down a bit, but not going for the kill. So, just harassing him out of the lane. I've been sneaking exercise assassins said, okay, we can't do anything bottom. So, we're going to send our Rubik roaming around. He's going to put pressure on the Medusa, so Medusa isn't free farming at the same time. Wiper's going to head top. Golden is, uh... Well, he's getting wrapped on currently. He does have this ward though, so he knows this is happening. He's gonna walk right into right right into Whitebeard. Right clicks him once, but Whitebeard not taking that much damage and he just backs away and I expect it is. He does have clap, but it is only level one, however. Bounce rune now picked up for a little. He's gonna walk up to the high ground where Fluff can see him clearly. Lil is just gonna maybe throw up his disruption if he wants to. We're just gonna zone him back out. So this is the problem now for Nyx Assassins. They're not getting any farm on Ush in this bottom lane, like at all. They're starting to get farm for Ix Mike in the top lane, but they really are gonna try to shut down Medusa, and I think that's important. And Illidan, if they can bring him down this game, they can certainly get a victory here. And TC, I think, is going to be the biggest factor coming out for Nyx Assassins. If you can get involved in a lot of kills early, then all of a sudden this game becomes a bit more difficult for Virtus Pro Polar, whereas they're already pretty much winning every lane. Down bottom, though, Ush getting caught out. They're going to use the Illusory Orb. Godlike already fire blasted. Easy blink for Ush, though. Level 2, he's not going to get caught out. There was no disruption for Lil, so he wasn't even there at the time. Well, Whitebeard is sitting top, trading extremely aggressively on Illidan. 
Yeah, this is very scary. Fluff is actually coming in as well. Wiper maybe could have gotten that kill. He had telekinesis up in one second, but it would have been maxed away. And realizing no, that they have this ward. He knew exactly where Fluff was, because when Fluff was over on the top run area, Creeps gave vision of him, and he got pinged out by Lil. So they knew that Fluff was rotating up, and he knew he could sit there and trade until he saw him in the Observer Ward. And this is what they need to do, I think, against British Pro Polar. I mean, Illidan's already going back home right now, which is very important. Again, you can always Dyer's get back into the game with a Medusa. You have that farming ability, but... This is what they th I think they should have done from the, from the word go. And now they're starting to be aggressive a bit more. But this, this leaves Ush in the bottom lane getting not much. He has five last hits, so that's more than maybe you expect, but... It's still pretty bad. Mm, it's, a, it's a hard game for the anti right now. Not as hard for the Medusa. Because he at least got the first couple of waves. This reminds me of a game where, um, now the US played against Shadows of the Past, where Snaking was playing Anti-Mage and he got literally no farm. He had two deaths and 20 last hits at the 20 minute mark. Or, some, or 10 minute mark rather. And he still was able to carry the game at about 30 minutes in. Just by getting Battle Fury through sheer willpower alone. So, I mean for us, it's just don't die essentially in this bottom lane. And maybe someday you'll get your Battle Fury. Now, Snod doesn't know what to do with their supports. They sent them top, and then VP supports rotated up there. They send them... They're starting to send Whitebeard back to bottom lane right now, but VP is gonna see this, and they'll probably send their supports back down to Puck. Their cores in top and bottom are actually able to get stuff when their supports are gone, Denied. whereas Brewmaster isn't able to get too much alone other than experience, and Anti-Mage is the same thing. Not getting too many creep kills. Meanwhile, the support levels... If you look at the EXP per minute, it's absolutely terrible for Sun. Their support's wow. being very underleveled, which is going to play a huge Radiant's factor in the mid game. In the early, first couple of fights, it's going to be very hard for Sun. Fluff's still level 1, man. Like, at this point, this is looking real bad for Sneaky Nick's Assassin. It's just through support levels alone. And on top of that, it's not like the carries are getting that much farm. Their cores in the, in the mid, or Radiant's rather bottom top, top lane. TC's is getting attack. a decent amount. Um, but. In comparison, I don't know. This is oh, Fire Blast coming in. Wiper getting caught out. Phobos is going to throw his Illusory Orb as well. Fade Bolt's going to fly, but that's for his blood for Goblack. Cold Feet will connect at Goblack. He's getting low, but that's not going to last him there for much longer. Blink Forward, they want this kill. He's literally the tankiest hero alive. He's got eight armor and he's tangling up, but here comes TC to secure the kill. And uh, he is literally not unkillable. He will go down to Fluff, and that actually gonna, that's going to get him a lot at least. It's going to get him up to level two, almost level three. And that actually gets some more gold going for us as well, which is very important early on in this game. Top lane Ix Mike manned up into Illidan. They just kind of whacked each other for a little while. And then Ix Mike ran away. No. Standard Ix Mike play coming out in that Brewmaster. He's sitting here, he's farming up. Oh, he's very low. He gets hit up with a snake, and he actually has to go back home. He's going to salve, actually. Just kidding. He doesn't need to go back home. He also has his bottle as well, so... He'll try to get his blink next because he doesn't need to go for Arcanes, because he has that bottle. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. They're gonna try to go for a kill on the top lane and Elden, but he's gonna back up. They have wards in this jungle, and there's a creep wave right now, and Ix Mike is making sure that Fluff doesn't get spotted here, but... I think they have a feeling that he's he's probably somewhere in, in the vicinity. You know, Anti-Mage gets disrupted on bottom lane. Gets silenced afterwards, but it was just a little, little bit of harass. Uh, Ush this game did not skill Mana Break at all yet because of those images coming out from Shadow Demon. If you skill it up and you get silenced after disruption, you could be completely oomed and dead because you can't plunk away. Yeah, that's actually smart, uh, I think. So. Usually you'll see anti-mages get a magic stick. I say usually, but you don't really see anti-mages and anti-mages against Shadow Demon at that. But you can get a magic stick, so you can get your mana back after you put it off yourself. And you save a point to skill into mana break whenever you go for a kill. Which he did not do either. He put his extra point to his stats. Oh boy, got black. Oh, they didn't spot him. They're looking for Illid, and he's going to use his Mystic Snake. There's the Chilling Touch. Wiper gets obliterated by that one hit of the Mystic Snake. Cold Feet went through, didn't do anything there. There's the Fire Blast on Fluff. He's about to fall. Mike getting chased down by the Medusa. Fluff about to go down. Just to the right clicks alone of Goblack. He will fall. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a skewer coming through. RP as well. Disruption. No! Oh, Mike. He will get away. Virtus Pro Polar with the misplay there. RP into the disruption. He tried to skewer afterwards. Some miscommunication from Virtus Pro Polar. They, they uh, wouldn't have gotten that kill regardless. RP doesn't last long enough for them to finish him off. But they would have forced out the Brewmaster ult, which is important by itself.
Dyer's middle and they don't do either in that attack. situation. They don't get the kill. They don't force out the roll. Ice Mike stays in the top lane. He gets more gold. He's up to a thousand now. So rotation back mid towards TC. He's probably fine. He actually has a decent amount of farm. Wraith band bottle phase boots. He's got two GG branches, which will probably turn into a wand here in just a moment. Thirty-eight last hits. Second most of the game behind Phobos. He's sitting on forty-three with free farm in the bottom lane. He'll have a pretty early blink. Regen is going to be picked up by Scandal. He'll have RP in 68 Radiant's seconds. So, again, it's just trying to create space for Invertus Pro Polar to get some items up on their course, especially if they do so. He's going to be going for a Lincoln 3 yet again. Uh, Anti Mage is sitting on. It seems to be. Tower is uh, under attack. Now, he actually just has 450 gold in the bank. He's got a Coin Blade, Marine of Health, and Poor Man's Shield, so he can't even get into lane right now. That's a problem. Uh, Goblet's skill build is something to watch this game. Right now, he's Radiant's level 4 with 2 points in attack. his Fire Blast and Ignite. Um, gotta wait and see when he starts taking points in Bloodlust. He might start doing it at 8, 9, 10, and 12. Get his 4 points in Bloodlust, buff Medusa. Uh, that would be the, the choice I would make here because they're really, really trying to buff up this Medusa with those hero picks. Yeah, I mean, you I don't see too much out of fire, or er, not fire, let's ignite later on in the game. Just for the early chasing potential, I think it's really nice here, and just the damage over time, but... Yeah, two points is good. I wouldn't put more than that in it, though. Well, back to Unless farming. Unless he starts getting crazy amounts of levels soon. Which could happen, theoretically. I mean, you get a big RP coming through. I mean, they're trying to go on TC right now. Disruption's going to fly. Soul Catcher's going to go as well. It looks like he's going to down on the creep, unfortunately. TC, he's going to get fire blasted. He's going to get ignited as well. He's going to melt strike. They will use the uh, big, big RP coming in from Scandal. And TC does fall. Almost getting the kill on Godlike, however, though. At least turning that around, so. Nice nice little play there just to get that kill. They, Of course, with the Soul Catcher, they probably get that kill without RP. I'm not sure, but at least they lock him down and they, they bring him down, so. Good levels for their supports getting the kill on them solo mid. God, Fluff can't buy a level right now. He's level 3 still. Yep, the supports and stun need to get a kill somehow. But I don't see them killing the Medusa. I don't see them killing the Magnus. And I definitely don't see them killing the Puck unless he farms with Illusory Orb. I don't even see them killing Goblack. I mean, he's got 8 armor. He's got 1,000 health at level 5. Yeah, he's actually sure. tanky as hell. Yeah. Ah, it's, it's a hard life for the stun supports right now because of their... Landing decisions of Odin wow. in here. Let's run around. That disruption actually saved him from the side trap. Odin is going to get brought down with the telekinesis, but still, it doesn't matter. Buyback coming in, or no, I just heard the sound for whatever reason. Cycling up. That'll be on the ogre. He's going to just get up in the air. Illidan still very tanky with the mana shield. Skier through. Skiller does not have RP, but Mike does not have his ultimate anymore. Lil's getting brought low, but it doesn't matter. There's going to be the Dream Coil onto two. TC going down as well. He falls to the shockwave. Whitebeard, one right click. Phobos has his illusory orb in one second here, and he might go down. No, he stays alive. And they will trade two for one effectively. Scandal TP is back home. Nice fight going the way of Virtus Pro Polar. And again, they're starting to lead the way here. In fact, they go bottom. Scandal trying to fight up against us. He's just trying to sit and farm for his life, but he can't get anything done in this bottom lane. Dyer's yeah, they don't want him to let us have anything. He's been getting some farm in the jungle, Radiant's but it's not much. Is under attack. Nyx was, is in a position where they had to try to force Dyer. something and try to get a kill. Panda ult is their best Radiant's utility for trying to team fight and get kills, and they just don't have the damage. It's uh. not there for them. Their supports are too under level. They don't get enough out of their panda, or he can't do enough by himself, I should say. And VP was able to counter that and take a good fight, killing off two of the cores of Sna. Oh, that's a career that they could just maybe kill. No, they decided to walk past it. They want to get a kill on a hero, and they're going to find Fluff out of position. And as if this game wasn't hard enough for him, he gets blocked and trapped, and they grab the kill. Lil's going to get cold feet, but that doesn't really matter. They did an aggressive smoke to put pressure on anti-mage and get wards into the radiant jungle so they can keep playing aggressively and they just happen to find fluff and stuff at the same time. Usher's Usher actually... just blanked. Yeah, he doesn't uh, have disruption though for Lil, unfortunately. He's alive. Yeah, so he's gonna stay alive. They can't get the radiant fire blast off, they're not in range, but they're gonna pressure attack. this tier 1 tower. They're doing such a good job of creating space for pretty much every hero on the map for Fred's Pro Polar. I mean, even though Illidan is farming the jungle Radiant's currently, now that he's dispersed for that's not really an attack. issue anymore. He doesn't have split shot yet, obviously, like the last game, but still. This is getting very, very difficult for Sna very quickly. Yes. They got out strategized this game heavily in the early Sorry. game by Goblock and VPP. And now that's a blink dagger at 12 minutes in for, you know, uh, for mid lane Radiant's scandal, actually. He's not, he's not awful. Not that it matters. I mean, 
There's already a blink on the puck anyway, so really isn't much of a difference there. Yep. It's actually kind of ridiculous. 75 last hits down for the Medusa, so still getting back into it. Not quite what Illidan had earlier, but still pretty good. Um, they have the highest in net worth right now, the top three anyways. And TC, his involvement has been pretty minimal. I mean, that early team fight that you saw a minute ago really didn't pay off. They do have a, a, an ancient stack going, and he's going to maybe try to take this, but I don't know how much that's going to give him in terms of net worth and actual usefulness in these fights. It just feels like right now, Nyx Assassins are losing pretty much every single one of their lanes, and they don't have that late-game carry to get them back into it, and not, not at least right now, because Medusa's also got that late-game carry potential, and Illidan's getting up there, so... They don't really have the greatest pickoff potential. They almost have a blink on, or they do have gold blink now on Ix Mike. And Fluff is getting close to level 6. That'll help them out a bit. That's an RP on Hush. Skewer as well. Soul Catcher, he's gonna try to blink, but there's the Fire Blast. Nicely played. Easily done coming out from Virtus Pro Polar, so. One RP, one kill. Good trade coming out from Virtus Pro and Scandal. There's more than enough pick, poten pick off potential on DPP, but uh, Nyx can't really get anything going for themselves right now. No, they really can't. I, I mean, they're just going to keep us shut down, and they're going to keep Illidan farming top lane, and then we'll just see a repeat of what happened in the last game, except to a much greater extent. You're not going to have any items for Nyx Assassins. You're not going to need to get a rip here for Medusa, I don't think, at least not, not as early as they did in the previous game, which wasn't really that early at all, but... And Alex Mike is really the only hero that can do anything at this point. And that's not much. And you talked about how they need other heroes to help him with that. There's no farm for White Beard for him to do any damage. They're not even close to Ancient Apparition's Ice Blast. Actually, he is level 5 now, which is... They've given him some room for experience, but... It just feels like Virtus Pro Polar are in a situation where... They're just out farming and out playing and sneaking Nyx Assassins at every turn. And TC on the TA is going for a Yasha right now. So he's not trying to get a blink or a BKB or something to fight early with. So he's going to have problems living in these fights. And I think for Virtus Pro Polar, they can just play aggressively for the next couple of attack. minutes because they are they are ahead by a bit. I'm not sure by how much, but it seems to be 5,000 net worth for Virtus Pro Polar. Experience-wise, it's about 4,000 as well. Attack. So they have this lead going their way. And... I don't really know what you do if, here. If, if you're Snaw, your plan is to farm up on your heroes as much as you can and hope that VP throws. That's I don't kind see of that what it's at with how behind they are right now. I mean, if they do mess up in one fight, VPP, they'll give a lot back to Snaw and put them right back in the game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's the crazy thing is with this patch. Although it was changed, obviously, we talked that, about Haste. that a bit earlier, but. It's still, there's a good chance that this this changes. And... It's not like they're behind too far on things other than experience. They do have six now on fluff, which helps out a lot, but their Rubik is still only Radiance level four. Rubik is actually attack. closer to blink than he is to level six. How crazy is that? That's actually just absurd. That's a gold gain. That, that actually, but without level six, that doesn't give you that much. I mean, even having the blink, it's nice, but... <laughs> the snuff stack is getting ganked by... BPP. That hurts. Now oh, they're gonna smoke up. Looking for Illidan. Oh, he has his Mystic Shield on, so he's gonna pop that up. And VP are just saying, okay, well, we have this tower we can take, or we just go back, and, and Illidan's probably getting ganked. We can maybe help him. Blink, clap, split going through. Us gonna try to fight on him, and he's gonna try to mana burn him down as much as possible. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast will connect with big RP on to three. Blink four. There's gonna be a waiting rift. Now, FOMO is still going to work. TC getting low. They pop the invis. They bring down the Medusa, but how much is that going to really affect? Shockwave misses on TC. He pops the invis rune. He's still alive. They're looking for more. IX Mike 88 is gonna get out. They have no skewer coming through. And a two-for-one trade, Dust goes, but they can't Dyer's connect to anybody. They lose the Medusa, that's attack. nice. But they can't get anything else other than those two heroes, those two supports coming out from Sna. so... Yeah, that fight actually went pretty well for Sna. They have to commit everything if they want to kill. So they can't fight when VP TPs in reinforcements. That Invis rune saving TC is what made that fight good for them. They were able to kill off the core, and they only lost their two supports that are under-leveled anyway. Mm -hmm. Under-leveled, under-farmed. Well played coming out from Virtus Pro Polar, but at the same time, Nyx Assassin is getting a pretty big kill there. Uh, TC stays alive, he runs away, he TPs out. 
And for now, it's just back to farming for us and the rest of the Sneak and Assassin Squad. It's just the Claymore, the Perseverance. He's getting closer and closer to that Battle Fury, which is going to be about 20 minutes in, but at least it's something. Will's getting chased down. Ice Blast is going to go, and that actually just kills him. That the Ice Blast, the right click, the Mold Strike. It's too much damage. Troubles is going to jaunt away. His Blink wasn't ready to go, but he's going to get out nonetheless. Godlike in the top lane is going to Fire Blast Radiant's Mike. Mike doesn't have a split. Godlike's going to use his Blood Loss on himself, and he's just going to walk out. And I think you're right. This is the build that he's going for. He's going to get uh, Blood Loss in the next couple of levels here. Meanwhile, Phobos mid lane, Dream Coils. They grab the kill on Whitebeard. Scandal gets a kill on the bottom lane on us using the RP, I imagine. No, it's actually on cooldown, so they just use the Skewer and Shockwave and, and Power from Illidan. Yeah, they had Ush just blinks in and man fights Villain, and he gets skewered, can't blink during it, and just dies to magic damage, and right clicks from Illidan. The crazier thing too is that you don't need that much damage because you do have Empower now on your Medusa, and it actually gives you so much. I mean, he's 103 plus 18 with Split Shot on, which is pretty nice, so... Radiant's it's actually just ridiculous. This is Edinburgh might like, change a little bit this game because he does need to get an MKB for later on against Panda. Dyer's mm -hmm. middle tower is Drunken under Hayes attack. And Drunken Brawler are going to be pretty annoying. Radiant's deal, so. bottom tower is under attack. Well, we'll have to see how things go here. Another smoke from Sna, trying to fight around every time Panda ult is up, which it is right now. Uh, Ike's Mike on Panda just bought a Sobe mask, or Sage's mask rather, so he's going to be working towards a Vlad's. Ready to go, he jumps in, there's the split coming in, Mystic Snake, not used. Oh, it was in trouble, the Ice Blast doesn't connect in terms of actual damage, but they do get it off, but big RP, looks like it's on to four, what can they do with this scandal? Going to work, Fluff gets brought low as well, beautiful RP, is gonna get brought down on top of it all, big fight, scandal with the RP, going to work, Ike's Mike now gonna get brought low as well. All the while, Ice is farming bot, but it doesn't matter. They're gonna lose a fourth hero. He's gonna fall. Ice by getting a shockwave down. Scandal triple kill. Magnus is real. Meanwhile, Phobos is going in onto Ice, and they almost got a fifth kill there. Oh, what a huge fight going the way of VP4, and they are just making Sna work for this game. They are so far down right now after that engagement. My god. Yeah, they didn't have the damage to bring down Illidan. Goblik was sitting there, protecting him, and he actually stunned the TA as TA was running up to attack. the Mulch Strike into Illidan. Delaying that made it so there's absolutely no way Medusa was going to die. No. Looking at it right now. 20 minutes in. What do you do in this situation here if you're sneaking next assassins? You talked about having uh, them sit back and then farm up and then just trying to fight around, especially the Brewmaster Ultimate, but... They're trying to smoke up, they're trying to find kills, and it's really not working out for them. It just feels like they're getting further and further behind, and then stuff like this happens. I don't even know if you need the Dream Coil there, Bobos. I don't know if you needed that, but... I mean, I guess it's fine to get the kill anyways. So, yeah. in this situation, what do you do here? The map's pretty dark for Sna. They almost have their Blink on Rubik, which is nice, but... Even if he steals RP, they don't have the damage. Just, from anybody. They, yeah. Their anti-mage needs to have, like... Man to already on top of the battle fear he just finished, but he doesn't. It's just hard game. Hope your uh, enemies throw. Right now, it's not looking like they are. They've been playing really well. British Pro Polar seem to be thriving, especially on this Luxembourg server. 4 to 16. And. I don't know. I mean, at some point in time, you're going to have to make a decision on. You can keep trying to smoke here, but I think they just want us to get more from him. He does have his Battle Fury now, so that is at least a good sign. And this is maybe where it gets a bit easier. They also have the Blink on Rubik, like you talked about. Again, Spell Steel, how important is it going to be in this game, though? We'll have to find out. RP is the biggest spell, probably, in the game to steal at this point. Uh, at least during a team fight, so. Yeah, it's a BKB done also for Magnus, too. So, I mean, I mean, they're ready to fight. I don't even know if they need that BKB either. It's not like he's really getting caught out with, you know, the way his RPs have been going, so. Comes out of position, I think, for Sneaky Nyx Assassins, and British Pro Polar are ready to fight. They're going to try to push into this mid lane. TC is going to be pinged on here. Lil is looking for initiation, but he can't find it. And, uh, he actually doesn't have any mobility nice. items. He only has his strength with boots, obviously. And, well, now the tower's going to get pressured. They're actually just using Ilden as a uh, pushing source here. He's going to come through and try to fight with them. His Yasha is going to be done here. A bit of alacrity put on him currently. And he just actually needs the band of Elvis to finish that off. 
He's gonna go to town. I mean, he's got power. He's got a ton of damage. He also has bloodlust as well. So. And they've got four points into disruption for him. Link, silence, Dream Coil, Ix, Mike, can they bring him low enough? BKB, RP on to two! Whitebeard's gonna fall as well, collateral damage. Lose your was stolen right before he died, so he just says, hey, at least I got something out of that, but, well, not so much. They take the tier one tower. Instead of going for two, they decide to port Illidan bottom, so Anti-Mage can't take a tower. They want to gold starve completely and not give them anything on the map. It's actually just... Awful for us. He can't do anything attack. in this game, it feels like. He's just like, come on, guys, let me get something out of that. He has to go to the enemy team ancients, which is stacked nicely for him, but they I, I don't know if they know that he's there. Not that it matters. Regeneration. Check Roche. Who's your OBCs? AM. Yeah, am. nope. Phobos just walks away. Looks like he didn't scout him out. Nighttime vision. Yeah, the nighttime vision actually helping us survive in that situation. And he's uh, just sitting here without a TP scroll. So this is going to put pressure Radiant's on the tier 2 top and tier 2 bottom attack. tower. Lil is here with Medusa. He's going for the carrier kill right now. I'm not sure. Maybe? Nope. Decided again. Uh oh. Uh, Lil! Disruption! Soul catcher. Poison. And not enough. He had plenty of mana for Blink, so. Radiant's bottom Gem up on is under DK Phobos to just further cripple Sneaky Nick's assassin. Oh god, like, no. He's gonna have to RP? Yeah. RP now down. Ice Blast is gonna go. Scandal gets stunned up. Goblet gets hit up by that as well. But he's just BKBs. He's gonna try to TP out. He's already pretty low. And Phobos will get a kill down in the mid lane. That'll be on the anti-mage. Meanwhile, there's the disruption. TC coming in. He's gonna try to TP out Demonic Purge. And they can't stop him from doing so. He, he makes that alive. And actually, Scandal survives back in the well. His BKB helping him out enough there to stay alive against that Ancient Apparition Ice Blast. All the meanwhile, Indil Illidan is in the bottom lane. Every single lane is just getting absolutely destroyed for Sneak and Assassins. And they lose a tier 2 tower attack. down Radiant's bottom. bottom tower it's ridiculous. Their, their heroes just couldn't do anything about that either. They were Radiant's committing heroes to mid under after they lost Ush. They were trying to fight that. They were trying to farm up top and... I expect Mike uses ult up there so he can TP. They don't have a, a hero that can stand one v one against Medusa really, tower is under and feel attack. safe knowing that there's two blinks on BKP. Oh my god, this is just ridiculous for them now. It just feels like your heroes can't do anything. Period. You said your heroes couldn't do anything in that situation. They can't do anything. Period. Now, man. There's only four kills across the map coming out for Sneak Enix Assassins. The Mantis style is now done for Illidan Storm Rage. And there's, I think, no split for another, yeah, 40 seconds or so. They don't Radiant's need to get Roshan, although they could. They're taking the last or two in the mid lane. And all of a sudden, the pressure is now on Seeking Nyx Assassins to get something done. But it just feels like every fight that they're in, they can't get anything going. Radiant's they can't get the jump on Virtus Pro Polar, and they're going to take another tower here on the back end of some pretty big pressure. So. BKB is finished on TC, which is nice, but they still have RP that goes through that. Under attack. On BKB side. Yeah. And the right click ability as well, that's the thing too. It's just like, well, I mean, how much is that you gave me to do for you? Especially if he gets RP'd, they can get that pretty much entire combo off before he gets his BKB off, so... Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh. Oh, Ush. Fire Blast, there it goes. Multicast the three times, the skewer, they will break him down. They had to work for that one, but they do get it. They're actually going to chase after Illidan. Mantis Tal is going to go. Soul Catch is going to fly. They're going to go ult with, of course, Medusa. Now the Primal Split's going to go. Maybe they can bring down Illidan here. This could be big. Did pop his Manta in the split shot as well. Still getting chased down. Cyclone on Lilith. Dream Coil on the backside. That'll actually be on Whitebeard. It looks like he might get brought low and will get brought down in the back end. Illidan is going to fall, though, to TC. Finally getting involved. He gets a kill. A huge one of that. A double kill for TC. He's doing some work. GK Fumos, though, on the backside gets a double kill. Skewer back out of TC. He's getting brought out. There's going to be the Melt Strike doing some work, but Goblet comes in. Fire and Plastic Knight going in as well. Skewer, he's got the urn on top of him, winning. Rip TC about to fall in. Will triple kill for Fumos. They might lose everybody. The split already called. There's GG. 0 oh, 2 coming out for Sneaky Nick's Assassins in the first game, the first day of Dota Pit Season 2. And Virtus Pro Polar on the Dino back end of a victory. fantastic Medusa pick. And a great trap from Goblack. Go up 2-0 and take the series nicely. And they win their first map. Yeah, the first game, Sneaky Nix Assassins did the same picks that they did in 6.1, pretty much. They didn't really change anything. And VPP has been practicing a lot, and Goblack, the master of drafting that he is, uh, came out with something new in Medusa. And it worked 
fantastically for PvP. This second game, I think, can be summed up with Snog getting way too greedy and Goblock knowing how, how to punish that. Anti-Mage wasn't able to get anything. Their TA pick didn't accomplish a whole bunch. And just the supports from just everyone on BPP played really well and gave nothing to Snog. They really start the map, which you put it so eloquently earlier on in the game. We are going to take a quick break, guys. We're going to fix the audio issues real quick and make sure we get back into the draft. And game, or series number two, I should say, between Hellraisers and Denial. So stick around. We'll be back with that in just a bit. Again, I'm Mott. With me is Beat is, and that phase guy representing HighGround.tv. Check us out. Twitter.com slash 